we've got a good basis for all of our contrast. We've got that nice Payne's gray and dark plum shadow that just turns into red perfectly. It looks like that's exactly what it should be. So that's going to be a really good looking base for all of those guys. Uh, now we got to figure out the death company, right? So on the death company, it's reverse. We did the dark plum in the shadows the panes gray on the top, and then we lighten the panes gray up with uh, with our white blue. And so that's what this is, right? And I think... I think we could just get in there and... Uh, man, I'm, I'm tempted to just do it with the brush. So let's just do this with the brush. Let's just do white blue off the brush, and then we'll airbrush the filter over the top of it all when we're done. But I don't think we need to mess around a whole lot with airbrush. And I was going to say we could airbrush a white blue on there. But uh, our new signature series, the white blue is from Vince Venturella. You know, good old Vincey V. We just released our signature series paints two weeks ago. And they have been our biggest release to date. Fantastic response from the community. Couldn't be more happy. And uh, Vince and John worked with us to uh, pick some colors that they find themselves mixing all the time or don't have a really good solution for, but use all the time. So now they got them. Use white blue. Which really should be called blue white, but, you know, you know whatever. We're gonna go through here real quick with white blue highlight the whole model then we're gonna filter black back over the top of this so we want to do some exaggerated style highlighting here because when we put the black over the top of course it's going to darken all of our highlights back up so This actually doesn't need a whole lot of filtering. It's a it's a pretty good black look already on the armor. Kyra, you tried the black primer for the first time today. You'd been using Vallejo Mecca, but you have to say the way the black primer goes on and the flat black color is amazing. The other colors flow right onto it. So the idea, glad you're seeing that. The idea with our primers, they're a little bit lighter duty than the thick primers that you'll find out there. So you might, you know, you'll see as I handle these, I'll rub the primer off the edge of the base. I always go back and repaint it anyway. But once you lock a base coat on top of it, whether airbrushing or, or with hand, it's fantastic. They just work like a champ. So glad you're seeing it. They're great. Great primers. And the matte finish will definitely give you something to build off of that doesn't ever leave you wanting for more, right? There's no shine to it at all. So you're doing Shadow Keeper Custodes with black armor. You're struggling to figure out a color to highlight the armor like you're doing with the bold eclectic salmon. So Azure, like these, right, are black. And I've done them with the, you know, like I said, like the dark plum shadow, right? And then the Payne's gray top coat. 
And then I mix Payne's gray with white blue, the way you're seeing me, the color you're seeing me use now for this. And that was the highlight you see. And now I'm going to go over it like, like you're watching with the, uh, the white blue to do the edge highlights. And then I'm going to filter back over it. I like to paint black this way where I can really kind of blow out my highlights, make them too bright, and then filter black like transparent black or um, black wash through the airbrush, you know, something like that. Even just thin down black paint works well. But that gives me the ability to basically get all of my highlights the way I want them dialed in on the areas that they're going to really work on. And then go back and filter over with, with black to then make sure that they get, you know, however bright or dark I need them. And you can see how right now, just this very loose airbrushing that I've done on here as I go through and do the, the highlights tightens up and looks pretty good. You just wanted to paint black armor real quick. You could just do this and then do a black wash over the top of it. And be pretty happy. Now, of course, I picked the guys that need this type of painting and gave them Mark II armor with 50 million lines I have to highlight, but, you know, whatever. So this is just, you know, three colors of airbrush and some highlighting that's giving this effect. So if you're liking what you see here, this is something you can achieve real quick. And you could use different colors. I like the red undertones and the shadows. And then the blue coolness and the mid-tones. So that's why I do a lot of my black armor this way. Yeah, the the like the warm cool just gives you instantaneous depth to what would otherwise be like black armor, right? Now this is you know not quite black, although it it reads it reads as pretty black with a, a dull shine once we get it on there. So you, like I said, you don't even have to work much harder than what you see me doing here. But if you want a darker black, then just a filter over it works. But don't filter so heavy that you lose your warm and cool tones. That's always the trick with this type of painting. Anytime you use a, a wash or a, you know, a uh, filter of any kind, your goal is to always just control it so that you're still being able to see the part of the model that was underneath it. If you spend all that time putting that color there, make sure it shows.
Uh, let's see. I missed one, I think. Hang on. Why is it not letting me scroll up? Azure, War Pigment. I don't think any paint races. Uh, salmon. Oh, maybe I made them all. Again, if I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention to painting, and I'm being a horrible host in chat. So if you ask me a question, feel free to ant, uh, ask it again. Just tag me, at SlowFuse, at Monument SlowFuse in the chat. And I, uh, I am not trying to ignore you. I'm trying to get these models done so when we go to LVO, I've got things to paint while at the booth. It'd be a good time. If you're going to be there, you can stop by and see all these models firsthand. Have some other stuff we've been working on there as well. This is all leather. Well, that's not. But I'll probably have to do that thing again anyway. Wanting a black candy to do that with and was struggling. So when I hear candy, it would have like almost like a pearlescent to it or some other kind of filter in it. And, you know, like red works really good for that. What you're seeing me do here would be really good. You can create all sorts of really cool effects when you go in and try to uh, tune your painting into understanding filtering. This guy, the Raven Guard, right? These are going to look totally different, but the concept was the same. Um, this guy has red transparent and black transparent filtered from the bottom, so the shadows are a little warmer, and then blue transparent and black transparent painted over just grays. All I did with this guy is sketch him up in grays. So it's all dark neutral gray, neutral gray, bright neutral gray, and maybe a touch of white on there for, you know, this one's on a YouTube video over on our YouTube channel. But I've sketched in like all the highlights on the shoulders, on the backpack, head, everything was just gray. So he was just white, he was just black and white painted. Then we sprayed red and transparent black over all of that sketching from the bottom and blue and transparent black over all of that sketching from the top. So you can see a little bit of that bluish hue, right? And then I went back and I highlighted with the bright neutral gray again to get the final kind of, you know, punchy shine spots on there but same same idea just a totally different method of doing it here we've just sprayed a opaque color of red so the red's a little punchier right and then we did the panes gray from the top so the blue's a little punchier but the idea is is overall the same just two methods of getting to the same end game depends on what you like how you're more comfortable doing it if you're okay painting sloppy uh value sketches on your models whether dry brushing or airbrushing or whatever and then using the filter 100 percent for your color great um or you can do the color part as the underpaint and the sketch to get your value on there and then just put black over the top and what the black does is just pulls it all back down in value and gives it that punch of black so you could go more blue than i've done here you could do greens things like that um on shinobi we just mixed in like uh green transparent into our black or like black green and black you know so that we got our black leather still looks black on the model but has a hint of green so anytime i'm trying to paint black i'm always trying to figure out another color i can put into it because just black black is usually a little bit boring right it's like all the leather here same thing hint of green in it rather than just grays but you can filter that Mix the color on your palette and just paint it. There's a myriad of ways to achieve the same goal. Now you got to order the trans. The transparents are freaking great. They just make all of this kind of stuff super easy because you don't have to think about it until the very end. <laughs> you know, whereas this this is more planned out, right? This is picking the colors that you want first and throw them on the model. Um, they're both 
equally as valid. It's just some people don't like painting that way. Some people think more in terms of, I'm just going to paint like your custodies, right? I'm going to paint the custodies in black and white to get the brightness where I want it and how I want it. And then I'm just going to filter some color over the top, like that blue and red on that Raven Guard guy. And that works really, really well. And of course, once you do it like that, it becomes something that you can do repeated over and over and over again with any color or any type of armor. And not just armor. You've seen me paint leather that way. Uh, pretty much anything you can dream up, you can find a way to use filtering of, you know, colors, whether transparent or not. To get some really cool effects. This is so different from this, right? <laughs> like, like it, it. These are gonna look really good. See, the whole reason for the 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 dark um, plum was because we used dark plum as the base of our red too, and so now both our red armored blood angels and our death company will tie in on the battlefield. Our black will feel like it's part of the same army, or at least feel closer to it, right? With that kind of reddish to it. That was my goal. A lot of times people say, why do you pick the colors you pick? And it's like, well, like, because of that, right? That's legit the only thing that was going through my head. How do you make a black that's going to look at home on the table with an entire army of the reddest red you've ever seen? Oh, you give it some red undertones. There you go. Hopefully not so much that it makes it feel like, you know, the... The red is the reflection of all the blood angels around it, but sometimes that's cool. Thanks for the links, Tim. You must be pulled over someplace, right? Stop for the night. Tim the trucker. Tim is not a lumberjack. Turns out. Crowbeard, what's going on? Looking, get in, looking at getting into uh, painting 40K minis, how do you know when to use a brush instead of airbrushing? Um, you can use a brush for everything. You'll see me airbrushing when I'm moving fast, you know, when I want to find a way to get a lot of color put out on an army very quickly. The airbrush is just a really good tool for efficiency. Um, but there's nothing that says you have to even own an airbrush. I'm a big fan of them. I've been using and reveling over them for, I don't know, decades. But, you know, they aren't a necessity. I can do everything that you've seen here, you know, with no airbrush. And a lot of times on, like, the bigger uh, display models that I do, there's no airbrushing used at all or just a little bit as a tool to help blend stuff like that um really it comes down to once you use an airbrush you'll find what you like it for and then you'll put it into your workflow to accomplish those tasks it really is that easy right some people you know use it just for priming 
and and I've said a million times, if all you do is get an airbrush and use it to prime your models, you win. Like there's no bad feelings there. Great tool. Well, there's nothing that you have to have it for. And knowing when to use it versus the other, you know. I feel like with the airbrush, a lot of it is when you get used to using one, you'll get all excited about it and you'll overuse it. Right? I think it's when to stop using the airbrush might be the real trick. That makes sense. Anybody agree with that? Like, I could have gone and used the airbrush to try to do this color as a highlight and tried to spray it into very tiny spots. And a lot of times then you'll cover up work you've done because it just, you can't, you're not good at getting it that fine of a spray or it's impossible to get it to that fine of a spray. And so you'll just kind of ruin, I, I say ruin, You'll, you'll just kind of waste the work that you already did. So for me, a lot of times it's like, okay, we're going to stop now and put the airbrush away and get back to brushing like we're doing right now. And I almost like this without thinking about putting a filter over it. The more I see the... Uh, The highlighting here. I'm going pretty heavy with my highlights, so I do need to filter it back a little bit, but I don't think we have to do much. Trying to airbrush a green flesh tone, you went too far and had to repaint the whole thing. That's the key. I mean, I do the same thing, Tim. I, I get to the point where I'm like, oh, this is great. And then I go well, like one color too far. Right? I should have stopped and switched over to the brush because either I over brighten with the airbrush or something like that. I should have stopped, you know, two colors ago. Kind of thing. I think about like, I don't think I want to do the same non-metallic gold. For those of you that are just joining us, we're we're doing... Our, all of our trim for the normal Blood Angels in this non-metallic gold. I don't think gold on the Death Company makes sense. I guess we could. I didn't really paint the trim on here with the airbrush because I was thinking it was going to be a different color. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Because right now, it's almost like I, I want to highlight it and just keep it all black. But I'm going to have to paint it. So maybe gold isn't a bad idea. Or like a brighter silver or something. It's probably a good idea to do it as a contrast anyway, so. We're okay, chat. We're okay. Crisis averted. Started thinking I, I wish that I would have done the, speaking of doing the airbrush differently, that I would have wished to do the airbrush a little bit differently there. Yeah, airbrushing, I mean, like everything that we do, it's it's a skill that you got to get comfortable with. You got to feel like it adds something to your workflow, you know, that there's a benefit for using it. Because it does take a lot of patience and a lot of training before you find that you are really enjoying it. I, I always tell people it's like one of the biggest things is just getting used to uh, servicing it, cleaning it, right? Because the biggest problem you'll have with your airbrush is the tip drying out and not being able to get it to spray the way you want to because the tip is dried out. So, you know, you're constantly uh, working with it. So, you know, learning the machine, learning how to fix and tune the machine is one of the biggest things you'll do. And then spraying with it is really just about paint consistency and just getting the, the finer motor skill, you know, and hand-eye coordination to really make it work for you.
You'll know better than I how daunting that may be for you. I've always had pretty good hand-eye coordination and dexterity. So for me, the airbrush from an early age made sense, but I couldn't ever get it to work. Like, I was very frustrated the first time I, first couple of times I used an airbrush, and I was like, this tool is horrible. And I refused to, to use it. I was like, I'll show the world. You don't need an airbrush to be good at painting. And so that's exactly what I did. I just kind of took off and forgot airbrushes existed for a long time because they just didn't work for me. Um, I had crappy airbrushes. Right? One of the first ones I had was like the... Uh, it was like a, a posh, I think, a uh, plasticky body nonsense siphon fed airbrush cheapo thing that you know my parents could afford for christmas or my birthday or whatever you know so i was lucky to have it kind of a deal and it was cool but it was really just made for things like inks if you weren't doing inks through it then it couldn't really siphon acrylics or god forbid enamels this was way way back Back in the before times, children. Oh, I don't even think Badger was around. Were they? Was Badger a thing in, like, 1978, 80? I don't know. Maybe they were. But there were some things I was seeing at hobby stores, you know, and I was asking, like, how do you paint a tank and get it to come out smooth? And everybody at the hobby store was like, you know, airbrush. You need an airbrush, kid. You know, to which you just have to laugh. Like, you, are you okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> And airbrush was largely a tool for print, right? So, retouching photos for print was a huge portion of using airbrush. Yeah, and just real rough kind of shine going on here. None of these lines are very tight or blended. Just sketching highlights on here, knowing that I'm going to put a filter over the top and get away with a little bit more than normal. And then just then, 
Like there, I thinned the color out quite a bit so I could do that highlight on the front to not be as bright as what I did across the top corner there. And this is all just white blue. Devilbus. Devilbus. A name I hadn't heard in forever. Yeah, Badger must have come out not uh, not too long after I started airbrushing. A couple years, sounds like. Cleanliness is next to godliness, always knows. It definitely is. Yeah, people ask me all the time, like, hey, why am I getting speckling? If you have, you're clogged. I've cleaned it. I'm not clogged. I guarantee 99.999% .999 of the time, if you handed me that airbrush, I would clean it and you would not have a problem. <laughs> That's just the way it works. People think of clog as, you know, something where it's not spraying at all. But in airbrush terms, constricted airflow, I guess, is the thing that I'm really talking about. And constricted airflow will cause all sorts of problems. Turbulence at the end of the nozzle. I really like the way this is looking. For being so damn simple, this is actually a pretty quick dark plum, Bane's gray, black armor. Ta da! There you go. Finish the owl. Aren't most of the DeVilbuses also siphon feeds? That's all I know them for. Kind of siphon feed or the one with the ink well. Those are uh, built from, like I was saying, like doing uh, photo retouching. You work at a custom painting shop and your boss uh, is notoriously bad for cleaning the airbrush. You basically do a full breakdown before using it. It's that bad? Yeah. I mean, I have to too, right? Because the idiot who paints in my studio all the time doesn't clean the airbrush. <laughs> Turns out I preach a lot better than I do with airbrush maintenance. You guys have seen it. Be like, hey, we're going to airbrush today, except the first 30 minutes, we're going to teach you how to clean the airbrush. <laughs> Dragon, do you ever use an ultrasonic to clean your airbrush? I try not to. I don't like ultrasonics for cheap chrome pieces like airbrushes. Um, you can get yourself into trouble. Uh, most of the airbrushes are done with the, the environmentally friendly chrome that we, that exists these days. And you don't want to put that into a, uh, ultrasonic cleaner if you can avoid it. It'll wind up that you'll start to degrade your chrome if you do it for too long. And then you wind up getting the the chrome flaking off. That could be a big problem. Not the end of the world, but... Usually you can, with an airbrush like the size of what we're doing and with acrylic paints, as long as you're not using like lacquers or enamels or something, and as long as you don't have a lot of scratches in the chrome already, 
more times than not, you can get your, your brush clean just by soaking it for 24 hours in a strong cleaner. Honestly, you shouldn't have much reason for more than that. Dunk the whole dang thing into a, a bucket of cleaner and call it a day. You guys don't use gold-plated airbrushes? Peasants. Mine are all solid gold. Peasant. <laughs> gold-plated. Mine are all solid gold. Who's the pleb now? Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me, Lord. <laughs> Gold plated. Rhodium plated thorium. Get it, uranium. My all my airbrushes are uranium. Weapons grade plutonium. Only way to go. Deuterium. Unobtainium. The cylinders of the jetpack looking pretty good. Tactical tortoise. What is going on? Hello, peoples. Tactical tortoise. Is that a man? I'm going to screw his name up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I should know this because every time, because tactical tortoise, I've seen your videos. And hang on. Don't tell me. God, I'm going to freak. This is like my time to shine, too, right? Trevi. Is Tactical Tortoise Trevi? I feel like it's... Hey, it's Trevi. <laughs> I probably just screwed the pooch on that one. Trying to remember. What is going on, everybody? Hello. We're painting Blood Angels, believe it or not. We're just doing a Death Company guy. I'm doing all my 40k Blood Angels in Heresy Armor. The screw Primaris. <laughs> We're doing true scale heresy armor. And all of my death company are getting Mark II armor with fan packs. Because, uh, screw those guys. They're all supposed to go die. We're not giving them the good stuff. Right? I feel like that's the way it would go. Death company doesn't get the good stuff. <laughs> Mark II.
Welcome everybody coming over. Hopefully you're having a good end of your Sunday. Or beginning of your Monday. I guess it's late enough, right, that we could be at beginning of Monday for some people too, huh? We have been working on, I got a wild hair at my butt, and I said, let's make some, uh, make some chonky, true scale, freaking blood angels. So I'm doing kind of one from every unit. I don't have Sanguinary Guard or any of the heroes built yet. I gotta do some customizing for the heroes and the Sanguinary Guard to get the wing backpacks done right. We're doing all the non-metallic gold, red blood angels, black death company, gold Sanguinary dudes. Although I probably am not going to do them all uh, completely non-metallic gold sanguinary dudes. So far, just all the airbrushing on most of these guys. Big old chonky relic terminators. Using these guys as my uh, uh, vanguard veterans. Mythic props, what's going on? Oh, yeah. Yep. Turns out temperature, humidity, and all that kind of stuff will definitely change how you need to work with your paints. Here in uh, Arizona, as we get towards uh, monsoon season, I have to uh, thin quite a bit differently. Because that's when all the humidity hits us. We're generally very, very dry. Like neg It feels like negative humidity here all the time. And then it'll crop up where we have to Stop using as much flow improver or my paint never dries out of the airbrush. And you'll get used to that. Then summer will hit and it's like living on the surface of the sun and all of a sudden everything dries immediately right, and you need to go back to doing it a different way. Shockman, thank you for the follow. So way the grayscale is almost a really nice heresy space wolves. This this could be used for something like that if you wanted to, right? It's a little darker. But yeah, before we put the black filter back over the top of it to make the armor completely black, this could work. You know, especially with a little bit of blue gray feel that we've got going on. I'm with you. This could work really easily for Heresy Space Wolves, even for 40k Space Wolves, depending on how you wanted to do it. I never liked all the baby bluish 40k armor for Space Wolves. Felt like it had too much blue in it. I think if you desaturate it a little bit, you get a lot better color for armor. Um, this is a little bit more interesting than the standard neutral gray that they show wolves in for the Heresy, though. So I think we found like kind of a good middle ground that you could use for both. Like for my Heresy Dark Angels, I used... They're supposed to be black. Right? And I went in and used a... Uh, black with green transparent mixed in. Like we were talking about earlier. So that I could get the, the kind of in-between color, right? A very, very deep... green or you know a slightly greenish black however you want to look at it so that could work really well for either 40k or uh heresy that was these guys yeah all the minis i want to grab are in like covered by other minis that was these guys 
but just a really, really deep green black that lets the red punch out for my dark angels. These are, this is my heresy army. So it's uh it's nice to have the you know the brightness of like the non-metallic bronze thrown on there and then this this dark green that the whole army kind of disappears and then punches of red that come out on the shoulders or whatever else we've got detailing across the army some banners shoulder pads on dreadnoughts and things like that Uh, Azure, that's Azrael. That's, uh, Azrael's banner, I think. No, 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 no. Azrael's banner's on the back of the, the captain. I don't have him in here. Um, this is the Dark Angel Standard Bearer from way, way back. It's, uh, to my knowledge, it's only sold either in metal or as fine cast. And it's got the whole arm. So this arm is attached to the banner to the shoulder, and then I chopped away the whole body because it's one piece. So I've I've had to cut all this, right? The uh, the banner is attached to the torso, head, and everything. And he's got like the gown that goes all the way to the ground. So you basically have to cut it away from his body. It's not. I wish it would have just been the arm, but it's never been. It's always been this big one chunk of metal. You can see kind of. I don't know if you can tell, but like up in here, you can see how the trim gets kind of wonky. That's where I had to clip it away from the body and all that. You can see like up underneath there, it's a little wonky. But I was able to cut it apart to where I even maintained the uh, the purity seal that's there. This, this is exactly how it sits on the Dark Angels guy. It presses up against his chest with that purity seal there. And it goes right along, unfortunately, this section of the banner. So you got to be very careful cutting that off. And it, and his foot is exactly like here. It touches right down there at the bottom. So you got to be careful with that cutting it off. But this guy was perfect for holding it. Other than that, I think... Yeah, all of this is part of it. There's I didn't add anything to it. Yeah, I didn't add anything to it other than that other than cutting it off and sticking it on him. So it was, it was pretty easy once you got it. Cut away from the body. And Dreddy, what's going on? Thank you for the follow. You love Space Marines in robes? I can't stand hey, it. Somebody likes us. <laughs> like, I literally am like, nah. Nah, no robes. No capes, no robes. What are you talking about? You can wear robes when we're home. You don't wear robes on the battlefield, people. I know that girl. That's Monument Gentastic. Everybody say hi, Jen.
Gosu, yeah, that was the other banner I was talking about. That was the one that was uh, Azriel's, and it was metal, and I had to shave off Azriel's name. That was a pain in the butt. <laughs> that that was a pain in the butt. And it's on a backpack too, so it kind of weighs down the resin guy. But whatever. Oh, there's no, he's on the plastic guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's on the plastic uh, Horus Heresy 2.0 box set. Um, Praetor, I think, is where we wind up with that. But yeah, I had it with the plasma pistol glow on it. I think it turned out pretty good. I was happy with it. Did Tactical Tortoise ever come in here and tell me if I got his name right? Anybody left from the raid from Tactical Tortoise? Welcome, by the way. Plank Walker, I see up there lurking. 2% milk consistency. That never makes sense, right? Like, people say, make it like milk. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Mythic says, at least it doesn't get so cold the air hurts your face outside. Ask Jen about that. Today, today I walked, Jen came into the, we've been working all day, right? Because we got to get prepped for LVO and we just got lots going on. So we have not had a weekend for like a month, unfortunately. But uh, this morning, Jen comes into the office and I, I don't remember, I walked over to her, to her office for mine to say something to her. And as soon as I turned the corner, I laughed out loud. She was all like, <laughs> like ch teeth chattering, coffee, <laughs> you know. She's like, it's freaking cold. It was like, I don't know, like 40 something last night. Probably went down to like 30 something last night. Freaking cold here. I don't know how people live. Into the world type stuff. Cats and dogs. <laughs> Jen's like, it's so cold! Main Shaman says it's 28. It's gotta be like, I don't know, like 50 or something here. Freaking cold. Get used to it. To the fact that it's so hot here that, yeah, 50 becomes kind of chilly. But I'm always making fun of Jen because she's... She's way, uh, way wimpy about the temperature. Not gonna lie. The day we went out and frost all on the windshields in Arizona, I'm like, wait a minute. Call the government. This is not why we pay taxes here. Somebody promised that there would not be frost on the windshield. Jen's like, I don't have an ice scraper. <laughs> She's like, what is that? <laughs> Fifties is shorts weather. Well, I'm wearing shorts, so. You're not wrong. 
You're not wrong. Yeah, growing up in Texas, it was like it was like very uh very like make up your mind, Texas. You'd have eighty degrees and then snow and ice. Right. Colorado was like that. If in the winter it ever got to where you got like a seventy degree day and you were having fun out riding your motorcycle, you knew that the next day was gonna be hell. Like legit it was gonna have the biggest snowstorm ever. If in the middle of a Colorado winter, you got a warm day. I learned that the hard way. I was like, oh, it's such a great day for a ride. I'm going to take a ride to Colorado Springs. And I got snowed in. Text at work, they're wearing shorts in minus 20. What? That's just foolish. Snowed in and Flagstaff. Well, that's like another world, though. They're getting, like, more snow right now than ever before. Like, one of the... I think they said it's one of the top three amounts of snow Flagstaff has ever had in recorded history going on right now. Ears are excited. Steve Eck, or Steve C. Is it Steve Eck or Steve C? I think I call you Steve C all the time, so we're going to stick with that. Yeah, Steve C. It. That's what I call you. It's not bad. They have a gen here. He's mine, so don't move here to get a gen. Because this one's mine. There might be another one, but this one's mine. That's the only reason I'm here. That and the fact that our company is here now. So I have nowhere else to go. We're not moving Monument Hobbies anytime soon. Your heat is turned to 74 
in the winter and the air is turned to 78 in the summer. I don't think Jen puts our heat up that high. She'll pipe in here, though. Not too chabby. Use a paint producer in Iowa. No, you you don't need paint producers in Iowa. Silly human. All the good paint comes from Arizona. No, we nobody won Jen. I, I think they won a couch, didn't they? And, and did we ever give that away? I don't think we actually gave the couch away. Somebody was trying to say we should give a, away, like send Jen to Australia in a box. The one lucky winner. But Jen never agreed to that whole thing. And I'm going to say I didn't agree to that whole thing either, but it might have been my idea. So I don't know if that's the case. I'm going to plead the fifth on this. I'm not real sure what's going on. Davey, you need to do a palette cleanser on your Warhounds. Do you have a particular paint from the Signature Series you love? All of them. The Signature Series paints are amazing. Warm brown, amazing. But all of them are amazing. Seriously, you're not, you're not going to find a bad one. Warm brown's a good one. You're trying to figure out a color to like go and base a, a palette cleanser. Paint job on? Is that what you're asking? I mean, you're seeing me use the heck out of Payne's Gray and Dark Plum on these guys. Loving both of those. Payne's Gray is awesome. Fantastic color to play with. It's the main color that you're seeing on this guy. As the uh, black armor color. I have a... See that Ganur? Oh, it looks like the tip is curved. It's not. It's got a ball of dried paint. 
That'll make your life unpleasant. I like that. I like that a lot. Do then. Did the glaze the highlight on this elbow, but. Oh, and I can use it to glaze the highlight up here, too, huh? Are you planning on a bright and dark red gray? Uh I could see a dark red gray. I'd have to really think about bright red gray. It doesn't seem like anything that makes sense to me right now, but weirder things have happened, you know, like us creating a paint line. Oh. So. But a darker could definitely be a thing. Figured it was time to play with them. They're great. Both of the signature sets have just got ridiculous colors for using in just about every situation. I haven't found one that I haven't enjoyed the heck out of. All right, there we go. Let's, uh, before we call it quits for the night, let's do a quick, since we got the airbrush on, let's do a quick filter over the top of this guy. Thank you. Uh, oops. Oops. We need to do some color on the inside of the fan area, don't we? Uh, 
as I'm seeing it here. There we go. I'll worry about all that. I might do like the nipples of the propellers red or something like that. I'll figure that out later. Not worried about all the teeny details right now. But I want to hit this with... I think we're in a good spot for that. The shadows with the plum are really good. Now we just got to knock the whole thing back with some black. And the question is going to be, I think, I think transparent black is the right way to do this. Royal purple is great. Dark jade we've been using the heck out of. I've used it so much lately, now I can't think about it on what. The turtle. Shell belly thing. Blending it real quick, like wet blending on there. Also, we've been using dark jade on. Bunch of little pokey things. But it's a great color. I feel like uh that's all green. Oh the the uh the swords for the Ozark Bone Reapers, the dark jade into the dark blue, dark jade turquoise kind of thing on the Ozark Bone Reapers is really good. So it works really quick for the wet blend on those. It works great. It's Bill Farty. Does climate ever affect the bottling process, Nick Pie? No. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. I mean, okay, so the bottling process is all done in a controlled, pressurized environment. So technically, I guess I, there might be like a variation of like plus or minus, you know, uh, one PSI that we fluctuate. I don't know. I'd have to talk to the guys, but we never think about it like that. Avian, what are you saying? Well, also, why a box? I don't understand. Sugar Rush says, who are you shipping things to in Germany for the next set? PK Pro. And their order should be getting there this week. And yeah, Bill Farty, I didn't see your question, but yeah, I'm, I'm at a standing desk. Look, Ma, no hands. So I stand the whole time, but my Apple Watch says stand up all the time. I have a I have a big rubber mat with a bunch of weird shapes on it that I stand on, so it gets me taller and shorter and I am always rocking my hips and moving my feet around. I found this is the best way in the world for me to paint. Period. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to filter a black over the top, and I think I'm just going to do transparent black. We've got all of our color baked in here, so I don't think I have to use uh, the transparent blue inside of the transparent black. I'm just going to go with transparent black by itself. So let's see it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, do I have any? Transparent black. This is transparent black.
Now we're not gonna fire it into the shadows, I don't think. I think we're just gonna keep it on the tops where the highlights are because I don't wanna get rid of that, that uh, dark plum that we've got. We're gonna mix this with the glaze wash medium so that we can get a very nice translucent black going. We don't need a lot, four or five drops. These cups almost seem like a waste sometimes. Glaze wash. Perfect through the airbrush. Great way to thin your paint and not get it to feel like water. If you're if you're spraying through the airbrush and you're trying to do really thin layers, you know, just kind of like glaze a filter over it to, you know, maybe maybe you wanted to filter some yellow over the top of your red to give it a little bit more punch, you know. Uh, in order instead of using just water to thin it down or a thinner that is more uh, like water, meaning less viscous, because the problem, like you see me painting with the airbrush, like right on the surface. And one of the big things is to make sure that your paint in the airbrush is never like water, because as soon as it sprays out, if you're trying to get a very tight location with a, with a color on there and you hold the brush in the same place as you kind of try to get that there, it can spider web out. You probably, if you've ever used an airbrush, you've seen that it will just kind of grow fingers. Um, and so you got to keep the nozzle moving to avoid that. But if you're trying to get a very tight area, trying to move the nozzle and still spray in like a pinhead, you know, when doing an eye or a, a bright, you know, Space Marine shoulder highlight or something like that, you don't want to be moving the brush all over the place, but you also don't want the paint to spread out. So mix it a little more viscous and the glaze wash medium will help with that because it keeps it feeling like paint, right? Your paint still has the consistency of paint, but has the opacity reduction as if you've added a ton of water to it right so we'll we got like what four or five drops of paint here so we go one two three twenty lots of medium okay then i'm going to get a number six brush filled with as much water out of my paint thing as it'll hold and we're going to stir that up The glaze wash medium has absolutely no tinting factor to it at all, so it won't change the color, right? Your color will desaturate because you're thinning it out, but it's not because of the color changing. It's just because it's thinner. So mix that up. And give it a swipe. Oh, perfect. Right? Just a nice dark filter put over the top of stuff. Now we're doing black armor, so I'm using black transparent. You don't technically have to. You could use, you can mix this with blue, you mix it with purple. We already have the color on the model, so we don't need to worry about that, right? I'm gonna add just a little bit of water in this. All right. Still flows a lot more like paint than water, still thick. You can see, hopefully, by that example, why the uh, the glaze wash medium is so good off the brush because it keeps your paint feeling like paint. A lot of red came out of my airbrush, so we're gonna run some water through the airbrush real quick. Because anytime you can glaze and not be having to push your paint around like it was water, much better for you. Okay, with just a little, just a little red on the tip or something. I definitely don't want any color intrusion from the airbrush if I'm going to be doing a filter like this. Not good. So make sure your tip is clean. Make sure you run some water through your brush first. Do all that good stuff. That right there. And let's go to town. Right. Empty brush. Blaze wash medium, black transparent. Get this out of the way. I'll show you what we're dealing with here, right? Look at the green tongue on my snake. One pass with this. Two passes with this. Three passes with this. 
four passes with this. See how it's just darkening? Giving me a good shade. The green starts to get a little desaturated as we add more. But that's what I'm dealing with here, right? Basically instant uh, shade filter here. So let's just start across the backpack. I just do one nice even coat to start. Not trying to change the world in one go. You wish they would invent instant shipping? Right. So just in one pass, we can see it darkening up a bit. Of course, we don't have any way to associate that against what it was. Right. But let's go again on this backpack. There, we've got a pretty good black armor. It still maintains all of that. Actually, now, the dark plum even has more contrast than it did with the blue, right? You get that nice kind of rainbow feel of red reflection in the armor. It goes on very, very smooth. See if we can get a nice zoom for you here. Very smooth. Maintains our matte finish. Doesn't add any sheen to it. Doesn't cover up the other colors. We still see all the colors coming through there. It just darkened them all up. You see the bright spots where we did our highlights, right? They just got darker. The black desaturates them. Gives us a little bit more gray, but gives us a really good kind of dusty black armor there. Then now we can go back and do the, the specular highlights with that nice little poke of shine with the blue-white that we have done earlier. And we'll get a really nice effect out of it. Right. Do I have any blue-white here? Let's just real quick. Without a lot of thinning, what we want to do here is just kind of go back and find the spot where it would be the brightest.
And now we're into the land of dudes, right? We're not doing many lines, right? We're just going in here and popping little bitty shine spots onto these areas. Just to poke a little bit of shine along those same edges we just did. Not all of them. That's a really easy way to get black armor. Because you're just going to go back and darken it up to your liking. It just means you have to get comfortable with making it too bright. At first, almost. So that the black filter, when you put it over the top, still lets has something that it can let show through, right? But we still got a little hint of that blue. Right, which keeps the model from just being black, right? And the plum, because I didn't shoot the black transparent up from the bottom. So the dark plum reflection on the bottom still works really, really well and gives us that feeling of red that when we put it on the table with our red dude, since we use the Payne's gray and the dark plum as the shadow for the red, right? These are going to look really good on the table together. <laughs> 